Evers, it's me, Jen Evers, with Quality Crafts, and welcome to Free Play Friday, and the best thing about that is that it's the weekend, and I don't have to go back to work until Monday. So, we're going to get into a project today called the, the Petal Card, or some people call it a Petal Box Card, and some people call it a Petal Box Envelope. Um, yay! Hi, Barbara! So, there's many different names for this type of a uh, um, creation, so I just tried to slash and include the things that you guys would be looking for the most. Um, it's sort of an envelope, but it's sort of a card, and I've got a couple here that I'm going to show you. Super easy, so we might be able to make several of them today. Hi, Marilyn! Alright, so here are a couple of them. This one I did with double-sided paper, so that when you open it up, you see all the cactus or the cacti in the inside and then when you fold it hi carpe diem and i added that same color onto the back hi marcel here's one that i stamped so i used a background stamp for that one and then i added some paper to the inside and I added some paper to the outside. So there's a lot of different ways that you can dress this up for whatever occasion you're going to create yours for and it's super, super, super duper easy to make. Hi Krista and Barb. And then this one I also stamped and then I inked the edges. I left the bottom part white and then the inside is white obviously because I used all white for this and you can tell I smudged a few of my inky fingers over that. So depending on what you want to get into, if you don't want to have to do any stamping or get out any of those kind of supplies, hi Jamie and Brenda, then all you have to do is just use double-sided paper and you'll come out with one that looks like this. And that way you've already got the patterns on both sides and then you have one on this side. So you can use it to you use it as an envelope to put in like another little card in there. Some people call it an envelope. It's not really a box because it goes flat so it's easy to mail, but it could also be a little card and you could put a little belly band around it, you could decorate the top. Just if you're going to mail it, make sure that you're thinking about how high up everything is on the outside if you're going to mail it. It ends up to be 4x4, four four, so you can definitely mail it in the same envelope you would as an A2 card, which is four and a quarter by 5 and a half. Hi Norma and Carol. So. I just wanted to outline exactly what we are making today. One of these, and I'm going to be using a little bit. I'm going to turn off my heater too. I, I don't know that if you can hear the heater or not, let me know because I switched to a different microphone. Um, hopefully you're not going to hear a lot of that kind of stuff. But, he gets, I got a lot of like, I don't know what on here. I'm just going to, excuse me, wipe this off just a second. All right. There we go, all set to go. Here is the um, tool that we're gonna be using. And as you can see, I lucked out and got it at some kind of a garage sale for the amazing price of $1. So that is crazy. Um, this is linked below. You couldn't hear the heater, okay, cool. Good to know. So this is what we're gonna use to, to cut out our, <laughs> I'm going blah, 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 um, missing what I'm saying because I'm watching the live chat, which by, by, by chance of you have not heard this already, the live chat are archives with the video now. So just be careful that you look at what date you're watching it and don't leave me a bazillion comments commenting on the thing as we go, because <laughs> I won't answer every single comment if you're just commenting on the video. Um, that's just how it is, and I notice that some people aren't realizing that the archived video, now that it has the chat, the live chat attached to it, they're thinking that they're literally watching it live. Which is awesome for you guys who wanted to watch it live and missed it, because you'll still get that same feeling. <laughs> so anyway, I was just letting you know that. This is a Fiskars brand um, circle cutter. So if you don't have the, if you don't have the budget um, to buy a whole bunch of different circle punches, this will work fabulously. It's got a little um, rubber stopper here that when you push on the top here it holds the paper down and then you just spin it around on the paper to cut it and I'm going to show you how this works so don't worry about that and then this 
white, this clear knob, almost said white, this clear knob under here, um, righty, tidy, lefty, loosey. So when you go left, then you can slide the arm in and out. And the tricky, the trickiest part about it is that because it goes inside, okay, so one side is centimeters and one side is inches, because you have to look inside. Let me see if I can get my, I had a tool that, you have to get inside to this part right there, this little box part right here. Hopefully you can see what I'm looking at. This little box part right here, and you need to line your number up with that, the center of that little box part. You'll get the, you'll get the gist of it. It's not hard when you see it in person. You'll know what I'm talking about. Anyway, these are linked below if you want to get yourself one. They're amazing. I would also highly recommend that if you don't already have one, to get yourself a, a self-healing mat. Like these green ones. Because no matter how many times you cut into it, it's not going to cut through the mat or anything like that. It's super thick. And then by self-healing, it means when you cut into it, you're not really going to see a lot of the cuts. Um, the, the mat's just going to like come back together again. It doesn't literally self-heal itself. Like, don't get all crazy like, oh, that's a, it's not magic. <laughs> but um, it certainly is helpful. And I've got a small one like this. And then I've got a big, large one that's... Um, it's really actually made for like fabric and that kind of thing, but I don't use a lot of fabric. So hi, Sherry. We are making these today. If you guys came a little bit late, we're going to jump right into it since it's 5.05 and I'm going to start with doing a plain white one. And then you can make it without this tool. If you have any other way of cutting circles, like if you've got, um, if you've got different size, of punches for your circles or if you have different size of dies that you can run through like your cuddle bug or your big shot or that kind of thing you can totally use those so I just answered um, Br Brenda Gentry um, typed that question twice so hopefully you hear me I know there's a li little bit of a lag so hopefully you got that down like I said I'm gonna make one that's out of white paper first and then I'm going to make one using double-sided paper so that you can see it both ways. And mine are four by four, four by four, four inches by four inches, which means my circle is going to be four inches around and I need four of them because we're going to just, there is a way that you can get a pattern and just cut the whole thing out. So you could take one of these when you were done with it and you could go like this. And you could trace around the whole thing. But I'm just going to do it this way because I think it's a lot easier. Um, it's certainly a lot sturdier. It makes a very, very sturdy card, which I love. Um, and I just really like the way, the way it's made this way. But like I'm saying, you can get um, patterns like this. I bet if you looked up petal, um, petal box card, there probably are patterns like this that you can get online. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to do it using a circle cutter and then your paper trimmer. And I'm going to do four by four again. If you want to do different measurements, you certainly can. So I'm, I don't know if this one is four inches. I'm going to check. Yes, four. Okay, so I'm going to cut one piece four by four because this is going to be the center of the card. And all four of the circles are going to go around this. And then we'll decorate it afterwards. You can decorate the circles beforehand. Um, maybe we'll do that. We'll see how it goes. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and this is going to be difficult for you guys to see, but the four is in the center and because I was sliding it around, it's not really in the center. So I'm just going to move it slightly and then tighten this down. That tightens this arm so it can't move and the cutter is right here, the orange one. So I'm going to set it close to the edge of my paper so that I know that I've got room there. And then I'm going to push down on this because that holds the paper down. And then I'm going to, if you look, I watch, I hold my, hold my paper down with my thumb and then I push down on this and turn until it goes all the way around. And you can sort of feel it catch when it hits the last piece. And my blade probably needs to be replaced, which is why mine didn't cut exact. But I just pull it off. 
and I just cut off the last little bits, just like that. And it makes circles from one inch all the way up to eight inches. It's really, really cool. And increments in between, like one, one and a half, one and a quarter, depending on how good you are at looking at it and being able to read it. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I don't have enough room to make mine. I'm not really good at eyeballing this up. I'm gonna make another one. I'm gonna make four of them to make the whole card. So if you cut, if you run into the same issue as me, you either need a new blade or you need to go around twice. But I find like sometimes when I go around twice, I, user error, have moved it slightly and then I get a second ring. You'll know what I mean if you try it out. So I try not to do that. It is super warm down here. I'm going to take off one of my sweatshirts. Hi, Aya. It's 0.09 a.m. Somebody help me out. I don't know what that means. Cheers, guys. Thanks for joining me. We've got a whopping 43 people here today. That's awesome. So I'm going to cut another one here. This time I'm using my pinky to hold my paper down. <laughs> so sometimes I use my pinky, sometimes my thumb. I guess it just, it just depends. And you can get refill on, on Amazon. You can get refill blades for this there as well. I can't remember if we linked those or not. And I need one more circle, so we're going to do one more. These are so cute, Maureen. I hope you do try it out. Even if you have to use um, some other tools that you have, they're just, they're just so fun. All right, so you push down on the orange, and then I use my pinky or my thumb to hold my paper in place. You could even tack your paper down if you wanted to, use some, or use some washi tape, whatever you want to do. But that works for me. You do need a little bit of muscle, a little bit of um, agility to use it, so it might not be um, highly re recommended for people who have a lot of difficulty using their hands and fingers. Just an FYI, I find it pretty simple, but it just depends on, you know yourself better than I do, right, as an artist, so you guys decide. I love it. I've had it forever, and my friend um, Deanna was like, hey, you should pull that out. You have one, right? And I'm like, I don't know. I haven't used it in forever if I do. So I'm going to, um, just for fun, I'm going to move this. Do you see where the this is the blade, this orange? I'm going to move it all the way inside to one inch and cut a one inch circle for you guys. Thank you, Sherry. I'm really bad at military time. And then I'm going to set it down and show you. The blade is on the inside now and it's set for one inch. So let's see if we get a decent cut out of this. Look at that one inch. Sweet, right? And I don't know if I can even, if I open this up, I'm just showing you guys what this thing can do. Um, this has nothing to do with the project right now. <laughs> I just want to show you guys that it's really, it really is cool. So I'm going to set this down. I'm going to have to hold my paper because now this little button thing is holding in the hole where I just cut. I'm going to try to cut around that hole. I don't know if I got centered or not, so we'll see. And then I have to move, I have to move my um, finger because now that tail is sticking out. And do you see what I mean? Look at that. So cool, you can do all kinds of stuff with this. All right, let's move on because you guys came here to see the project, right? Pull out your bone folder if you have one. We're just gonna go ahead and fold these right in half. And like I said, if you want to go ahead and, and stamp and color yours now, you can. Totally up to you. Yep, some people use their Cricut, their... Um, Dragon Belly Green. <laughs> I love the way you explain that, Carpe Diem. She loves the Dragon Belly Green nail polish I have on. Thank you. 
I did it in honor of St. Patrick's Day, even though I'm not one bit Irish, as far as I know. So yes, cricket, um, you know, die cuts, punches, whatever you have. I just think this is like super easy to do. So I'm gonna take my four by four inch square and my four four inch circles, and all we're gonna do is just glue them on. So I'm gonna do this first, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of decorating. If you're gonna use, let me show you this one because this one is really super fun. If you're gonna use something like a big background stamp, like I did with this one and I only did these, and then I put a piece of paper over the top, if you wanna stamp the whole thing and then glue it on, if you're gonna have a backing, then it'll hide this so it doesn't matter if you go off that side, if you know what I mean. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I have that stamp right here. And we linked you to one that looked kind of like this crackle, but we couldn't find this one linked on Amazon. If you want to look at, look for it on your own, it's called Crackle Background 3024G, as in Greg. I got to turn on the auto for just a second so you guys can see that. 3024G, Crackle Background. And that's what it looks like. So we tried to find one that was exactly like it, but we were unsuccessful. So if you want to look that up, that's where it is. I'm going to go ahead and, before we glue these down, show you what I did with this. And then I'm going to probably smear them all over the place with my fingers. Oh yeah, my ink's up here. Actually, I'm not going to smear it. I'm going to dry it really quick. So I'm going to put some ink all over this. Okay, and then I'm just going to take about half of it and just press it down. And it's not going to turn out perfect. Do you see that? And that was the whole point to my doing this one. I didn't want them to be genuinely perfect on every single one. That one, you know, was a little bit more. But there'll be like holes, places where you don't have a lot of ink. And it adds to the character of the card. So there I've got some holes because I didn't press real hard. And then I'm going to do this one again. And see how I got some on this half? That is okay. So that's all I did. It's really super quick. It's just a big background stamp. I love using big background stamps for all kinds of stuff because they're just so easy to use. And then I'm just going to wipe off some of the background. One thing that I did with my old one, I mean my other one that I did before this, was that I went like this first and lifted it off and I got a big background stamp. I'm going to show it to you. I saved it. Check this out. This is dried and I have the crackle look on there. Neat, huh? So I can I can cut this now and use that on a card. Wouldn't that be pretty? And it's super soft because it's on a baby wipe. Anyway, so don't throw away all that fun stuff that you create as you're going along. Just might want to use it for something. Now, so I don't smear this all over the place, I'm going to go ahead and use my handmade embossing buddy to add a little powder here. And I don't care if it smears because that'll add to the crackled, like, old look of this. I'm just going to smear it all over these so that I don't get black ink on my hands and then all over the rest of my project. You know, I used to keep, like, a partially used, um, what do you call it, toilet paper roll here. To dry things off and I haven't seen one in quite a while but I do keep a flower sack towel around most of the time so after you've decorated that then maybe you wanted to hand stamp it or whatever I hand stamped this one with the keys on it and then I inked up the edges you can do whatever you want you want to make sure that when you're gluing these to your base that you fold it over and you make sure you have what you want on the top here facing before you glue it down. So I'm going to put glue on this side and glue it underneath here. Thanks, Lori. I'm 
so I'm going to go ahead. Hey, B, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, you can, you, you do have the power to go back in the video, even while we're live and look at something that you missed and then catch up with us. Or you're totally welcome to describe what you would like me to um, answer so that I can answer you. Or go back after the video is completely archived and watch again. And another idea um, is that I will be making another one of these in, as soon as we're done with this one. So like I said, you want to fold it over and make sure that whatever design it is that you wanted to face up is facing up. Especially if you're using the double-sided paper. I'm looking around because I think there's a, I think I have that key set here. Pretty sure I do. The keys is um, key phrases and it's at my shop qualitycrafts.com, the original store. If you're unfamiliar, we have a new store called jenscqualitycrafts.com. You don't need to type in an HTTP or a www, just jens, no height, no um, apostrophe, jenscqualitycrafts.com. But the um, keys that I used on this one, these keys, you can find those in the original shop, qualitycrafts.com. Upper right hand corner, click on store, give it a moment to populate, and then click on stamps. There'll be a little category that says stamps. Click on there and you should be able to find them in there. And this is our last one. I always do I always do the two sides first, opposites, and then the other two. Oh, this. How did I make this? I have a video on this. If you look up, um, Pamela, if you're, if you're able to look up while you're watching, um, my video on this and, and link it for them. Otherwise, um, it's just called the DIY embossing buddy and you should be able to look it up. It's just a little children's, um, thanks, Pam. I love that you're keeping up with all the links. You're awesome. Um, this is a little child sock and it has um, baby powder in the bottom. You can use cornstarch or whatever you have laying around your house. And that's it. That's all I used. So I don't think it matters what um, order you put these down in. But it does matter when you're closing it. Okay, so you're going to close one. And then you're going to go either clockwise or counterclockwise, but you're going to keep going in the order in that same direction. And then the very last one, you're going to lift up the one you started with and you're going to tuck this one underneath there and then smash the whole thing down. The measurement of the square is four inches and the measurement four by four and the measurement of the circles is four inches. So there we've got like a really anti antiquated whatever look and if you're unhappy with how this looks you just go ahead and cut yourself another four by four and cover it right up so let's go ahead and I'm gonna use a pattern paper here Move some of my junk out of the way I'm gonna cut a four by four here I believe this is four, I think so, four by four. All right, I'm gonna double check before I glue. Four by four. And then you can glue that down or ATG, whatever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and ATG this one down. this much glue I'm just trying to use up these old rolls that I have if you've been with my channel for a while you know exactly what I'm talking about <laughs> so I just went ahead and added 
some flower paper to the background. I thought that'd be fun. So when you open this one, it's going to be completely white because I did not use a double-sided paper. I just used white circles. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and close this one up. And you can put anything inside there if you want to put a smaller card or you want to put a gift card or whatever. Cash. Money if you're just handing them something. It's so simple to make. And like I said, you can do a belly band. You can decorate the outside however you want. So where did I put my key set? I thought I had it right next to me. I was ready to roll. Here they are. And this is the key set if you're looking for those keys that were on the other one. All right, so let's go ahead and do one with those. I believe you can go smaller too. Let me see, what is my largest circle? My largest circle punch, I think is two inches wide. Two. Let's try to make an itty bitty one. And we're going to do this one with, so if I'm using a two inch circle, then my square will be two by two. So I'm going to cut that right away. So we're going to give this a shot because why not? It's free play Friday, right? We can do whatever we want. Hey, D. I would not recommend mailing it just like this because it might get popped open or torn because there's pieces sticking up. I would put it in another envelope if I was going to mail it somewhere. All right, we're gonna do the keys in just a moment. But I wanna use a piece of double-sided paper, so I'm gonna pull in this stack. This is K and Company, Carolyn Gavin specialty paper. I tend to get a lot of my papers from Michaels when they're on sale. So nine times out of 10, that's probably where this came from. Oh, I like this one. Let's use that. Now I could use my circle cutter or I could use my punch. The first time I showed you guys how to use this circle cutter. And I'm just going to go ahead and punch this one if this punch works. It's kind of a finicky punch. I wouldn't recommend getting these punches like this where you have to push down with your thumbs. They become really difficult to use. I would highly recommend getting the punches that have the little fingers or the, 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 the trigger squeezers. But since I have this out, I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. I'm pretty aware of the parameters of my punches, like which ones are hard to use and how to use them. So this seems, I'm probably making it look pretty simple. <laughs> but trust me, this one's really hard to use. It stresses out my hand. So now I have to decide what I want on the outside and what I want on the inside. And I want this fun pink on the outside. So I'm going to fold it so like the apples are on the inside. That paper pack is probably old. I very rarely get new or trending paper packs. I suppose it might have a year on it, right? Do they even do that? See if I can find one. I do not know. It's thirty percent recycled packaging. <laughs> I don't see anything on it that says when it was created. So sorry I can't help you out there. Hi, Elise. 
All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and line this up, make sure I made my measurements right. Looks good, looks good. So since this is a two by two square, we used a two inch circle. This time I used a punch instead of the circle maker. I've never made one this small. I've always made the four by four, so let's just go ahead and try it. You did not miss the whole thing this time. Ugh. Who is that? The Luke feline family. So just like on the other one, I do like the two opposite sides and then the two opposite sides. So I really don't know that it's that big of a deal. It is, however, when you close it, like I said, you either go counterclockwise or clockwise, but whatever way you start out, you have to fold it shut that way so that you get that last one to close in. Cute. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one, and then this one, and then this one, and then that last one, we're gonna tuck it underneath, and then it stays closed. Okay, and if you don't like the way that looks, you can put another little square over the top of it, like maybe a green one to match the apples on the inside. Or you can leave it like that. Since this is all pattern, I'm going to leave mine. I'm not going to put anything over the top of that. I don't think it's necessary. And then when you open it up, you can see all of the cute little hearts and apples. Fun! That's a fun one. I could probably put inside this one. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. Who said that? D. Kepler said be cute on, be cute card on a baby gift. Okay, I want to do another one with this and we'll do the keys again. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out some more white paper. Since we're going to be stamping, I'm going to use white cardstock. I use Nina. Okay, I use Nina white cardstock. I think it's a 94 brightness and it's exact index cardstock 110 pound. I do not use Nina solar white cardstock because it's like five times more expensive. And I think this stuff is excellent. I've been told that the, um, the index isn't as good, but I think this stuff is awesome and I use it for everything. So if you're looking for one that's, um, not as expensive, that's the one I use. Nina, 110 pound, 94 brightness, exact index cardstock. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do a four by four this time. Actually, I'm going to do my circles on here. Cut out my four by four right now. And by all means, if you want to use different colors and, you know, go crazy and really decorate these, you can just, you know, make them all uniquely your own. Where did I put my little green guy? I'd lose my head if it weren't attached to me. I just had him. Am I hiding him underneath? Well, isn't that silly? What are you guys is probably screaming at me right now? It's right underneath there, Jen. Yeah, it's right underneath all the stuff I moved. <laughs> okay, so this is my self-healing mat because I don't want to accidentally go through the paper and rip up my black mat. All right, 
right, let's see if I can get, oh, I have to reset this because I have it set for like an inch or something. I'm using four by four again, so I'm going to set this for four inches. And hopefully we'll get four out of this one. I don't know. I need to make sure that I, I'm really bad eyeballing it and make sure that I stay. If you guys got a trick for that, I would love to hear it. And I need a new, I probably need a new blade on this. But I'm going to try to get all of this out if I can. Not bad at all. Should be able to get my other two on this side. One more. Ooh, got that one close. It worked though. So if you have a new blade in yours, it's not gonna do it's not gonna do what it does to mine. It's just that I'm too lazy to put the new blade in. <laughs> and you could go around it twice, but like I said, you might accidentally uh, wobble it just slightly and then have two different cuts, which you don't want. All right, so this is where we're gonna do our stamping. But I'm gonna go ahead and fold mine because then I know exactly where my what's going to stick out on my on my um, project as far as the stamps go let me show you what I'm talking about so you could stamp the whole circle but really the only thing that's going to show is this half and I wanted to make it look like they were all quite full of keys if you get what I'm saying like I probably should have put one coming in from this side but you can do it any way you want. You can even line them up if you want them to be like super, you know, perfect. That is up to you guys. And then as always, when I'm done here tonight, I will go over to Quality Crafts on Facebook. We'd love to have you join if you're not already a part of that group. I'll set up an album and anything that I make on a free play Friday always has its own album and you're welcome to come over and add your makes to that so that we can see what everyone else is creating because obviously they're not all going to look like mine and I want to get some inspiration from you guys because you're awesome at crafting too. So that's always fun. So now I have my middles marked and I know where my stamping is going to go. And sometimes, like today I think I'm going to do it. I put it a piece of just scratch printer paper underneath when I'm stamping and you feel free to make it any color that you want I'm gonna just use my VersaFine black for this idea Sherry, Sherry W. No new blades needed if you have a compass and a pair of scissors you can cut any kind of any kind of circle you want. 
A lot of people are really adverse to fussy cutting, even though I find it extremely zen. Um, but yeah, if you're willing to go that route, that's a really good route to go. So I'm going to just ink this up and I'm going to put this wherever. And it can go on this side because I'm going to cover it up later on. It doesn't matter where you put them. But if you're starting out with one key, you can get this one at my shop if you really want these same keys. Kawadicrafts.com. Try to put, you know, a couple on each one going different directions sometimes too. And start out with one key, stamp all the ones that you want to have stamped first, and then switch to a new key so that you won't have to pull that key out again. I mean, that's kind of obvious, but sometimes we just forget. I used this one last time, so I'll try to use this one. You see how even, I'll show you the other one in just a second, but you can see how even just the little bit I've been doing right now, this one is going to look totally different than the other one did which is really cool, I think. And now we're getting down to like smaller room. So I'm going to use this little key to fill in some spots. And like I said, you can go ahead and use different colors and stuff. I just happen to think this looks really cool in black and white. And I think I might go ahead and um, ink this up a totally different color like maybe I'll do it for like Valentine's Day and do some pinks and reds or will you guys tell me what would you rather see pink and red or maybe a blue and a teal or something or a purple and a teal I'll let you guys vote on that that looks pretty good I'm satisfied with how full those are Lisa, she bought this stamp set. She's got this one. So this is what it looks like if you're looking for it in the store. It's an Inka Dinka Doo key phrases. Super fun set. I really, really like those. All right, and now these are going to be kind of wet, so maybe I'll just dab it with my... guy here because otherwise I'm going to stick my finger right in and I just know what I've done it a bazillion times and then it smells like baby powder in here I love it blue purple or teal purple and teal all right teal and purple it is I'll have to look for those two colors and we'll do a little bit of edging and do I have anything right here? No, I'm going to grab another one. Ooh, we might 
I stamped this one ahead of time to check it out. These are pretty colors from Stampin' Up! Taken with Teal and Elegant Eggplant. Let's bring out these. Let's make sure. Yep, we've got an inker in there. I just use little pieces of felt that way when they're when they're done when they stop working or they get you know degraded then I can use another piece of felt yeah I think that'll work that's a pretty purple oh I don't think my taken with teal is really teal whole pile of extra fluff and now I can't find it. I'm going to go ahead and use my, my fingers for a second. Yeah, I don't know who re-inked this one, but it's definitely not taken with teal. It's more of a, this like, I don't know, ashy blue color. So let me just go grab my other teal color. turquoise keep tripping on my tripod a huge tripod leaning up against the side there we go and we have an extra fuzz in there too Sweet. I'm gonna go ahead and do the darker color on the outside I'm gonna do that All the way around and then I'm just kind of gonna make it a little fuzzy so first I'm laying down like a base of color you can do this any way you want it really doesn't matter and then I'm just going around the edge to make it a little fuzzy so it's not so stark And then we're going to add the teal in the middle. This is basically how I got the look of this. Was I went around the edge with like a gray and then the middle with a, a yellow. What did I use? Ice spruce and wild honey. And these, so this is ice spruce. This is wild honey. And on the inside, I think I did pumice stone or something. And those are um, Tim Holtz Distress Ink colors. And then we're going to try to do these in the middle and I'll show you my technique for doing that. You might already have your own or you might look at mine and be like, that's crazy. So I'm going to show you what happens when you go direct ink and then straight onto the paper. Sometimes you get, actually that looks pretty dang good, but sometimes you get like, like really dark spots of the ink that came right off of here. And it looks kind of bad. So what I do is usually just ink it up and then tap it a couple of times to get rid of those really dark spots. And then go right in the middle. See, I'm still getting it because I have too much wet on there. Now you can see it. Do you see what I'm talking about? Like it gets really, really dark. I'm trying to avoid that. But that looks kind of cool. I'm not going to re-ink up. Let's see what we get this second time around. That's much nicer. A nicer blend. You can go even lighter than that. I like the stark difference though. This time I pressed a little bit gentler instead of this hard and then I pressed a little bit harder to get the look that I wanted. I think this would be really pretty if um you did a little, uh, what do you call it? like embossing powder so you got like a resist for the black so like you could do the black a shiny black embossing powder that would be stunning or even gold or silver oh my gosh that would look so cool i hope somebody does something like that i would love to see it 
Anyway, so there's turquoise and teal, and we used the key phrases set that you can get at qualitycrafts.com. Here are all of our pieces. That looks really pretty. Um, I, I, it looks like on the camera to me that you guys aren't seeing the purple very well. Hey, Sherry. I must be doing a lot of talking because I totally have cotton mouth tonight. Good evening, note spinner. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dust off my fingers real briefly. So hopefully I won't get my white card base all muddied up and we're gonna go ahead and glue this together. There's just unending ways you can make this. I can't wait to see what some of you guys come up with because it's going to be fun. So when we're done here, join us at Quality Crafts on Facebook and I will put up an album specifically for this make, this project, this card. You guys come on over and once you've got your card made, post a picture for us to see. Again, you can use, if you don't want to do stamping and get all your stuff out, you can use double-sided paper, and in that case, you'd already be done. Another thing you can do, I have some ink on the in here, inside here, is you can cut some more um, circles and cut them in half and put one on the inside if you want to cover that up. I'm not too concerned about it. I tried to use my... Um, embossing buddy to cut down on some of that traveling ink but I still got a little bit on and then this is one where the back's going to look kind of funny so we're going to go ahead and cover it up Probably with another piece of white, although we could go purple or teal at this point to make it all match. I put my fingers on the sides here just to make sure that it's not hanging off one side or the other. There's another tip for you while you're putting these circles on. Totally up to you. Oh, geez. <laughs> Somebody mentioned putting confetti in there. Make sure that that person's not going to get irate if they <laughs> pop confetti everywhere. That would be hilarious. All right, um, do we want to do, I don't know, do we want to do what? I don't think I have another color that's going to match that exactly. So maybe we should, we can make our own. Let's make our own. Let's get creative. Ooh, this one might work. Nope, too small. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut a white piece. doing four by four. And that's going to be for the back. But since we have that fun theme going, we could go ahead and um, put that on here too. So let's do that to finish it off. used to using those foam applicators that's going to be much different than using felt I tried to go from felt to the foam and it was really uncomfortable for me because now I have muscle memory for how to use this foam and get a nice look and so when I went to try to do the other one it was just really rough oh gosh glitter would I would be angry if somebody put glitter in my card like just a handful of glitter for fun no that would really make me mad
Pam said right Jen after the show, but I'm not sure what that was for. So I do hope that you'll get a hold of me afterwards if you have any other questions. I'd be happy to help you out. I'll be over at Quality Crafts for a while. When we're done here setting up that album for you guys, so you have a place to put your makes. There, now we've got a handmade cover up for that back of the card that matches exactly because we use the same colors. I'm going to go ahead and ATG that one down too. And we're almost out of time, so we're going to end with this card. And I would love to know if you guys have any other questions or suggestions. And how many of you guys think you might make this project and, and show up at Quality Crafts? Because we would, I really want to see what you guys have to make after you've seen how it's made here. That's like the highlight of my day. When you guys either create with my digis or you use an idea that I've thrown out in my videos. There we go. And the inside, of course, is white, but we could change that. We could make it anything we wanted. You can use the slider at the bottom to slowly move through the video to get where you think it might be. Yeah, for sure. Was there something that I could go over one more time? There we go. One, two, three, four, and we're going to close this in here, tuck it in, thanks Carbadium, I can't wait to see you over there. So there we've got one, I'll show you guys the other one, here's the one that I originally made with some Tim Holtz colored inks, let's go ahead and fold that, one, two, three, four, tuck that last one in, so we've got two with the keys. And we've got two with that vintage looking, and this one we put flowers on the back side. We did this one together. Inside is also white. Oh, you were asking about last week. Okay, Barbara, I gotcha. Yeah, if you have any questions about last week, though, let me know on by PM and I'll see if I can help you. And here is another one. Doilies would be fun too, yeah. So we did two kind of pretty much the same as the other ones. Oh, I forgot about the little mini one we did. We did a two by twoer. Two by two. So a two by two square and two inch circles. So if you don't want to go through all the hassle of doing this, if you want to just take one, here's another one I made ahead of time. Double sided paper. So it's got little cacti on the inside and green on the outside. You can take one that you've made. Okay, if you don't want all this bulk, grab yourself another piece of cardstock and trace it. Like this. Just go ahead and. And then you might want to um, do a couple of. That, na that word always escapes me when I'm on camera. I don't know why. Um, a score. You might want to do a score mark on each one of these lines going from corner to corner after you've traced it so that you know exactly where to fold these so that your folds are crisp if you're worried about getting a crisp fold. So let's say you made one and then you're like, I don't want to do all the circles again, but I just want to do one. Well, let's do that. I mean, I've got time, right? Let's try it out. But if you do it this way, um, you either need some kind of machine to cut it out or you need to fussy cut, which I don't mind fussy cutting at all. I'm not going to decorate this one, but let's see how it turns out if we do it this way. Score lines! Thanks, D. I don't know why I have such a problem with that. Of course, I am getting older and sometimes I just my CRS comes out at moments when I don't want it to. So obviously if you're fussy cutting like I am, it might not turn out perfect. You 
can also Google a template for for this card and see if um, one comes up for free that you could just print. we can get a score on that. <laughs> Sherry, she says, I wonder how many people know what CRS means. That's why I kind of giggled to myself because I thought, hmm, I'm kind of wondering the same thing. All right, I've got a black mark right down here where I can line up my two corners on that black line, which is why I blackened this one so that I can get a straight across mark between those two. Otherwise, I'm wondering how else you would do that. I'm not really sure. Because you have to see where the start of it is and the end of it is. Oh, I have another idea. So if you don't have a scoreboard like this to do your scores, um, you could also use your trimmer if you have a trimmer like this. And that way, you would just line up on the cut line. So my corner is on the cut line and my corner is on the cut line. And then drag it across. Same idea. Okay, and then we're going to fold them over and see how we did. Oops, let's fold them the other way because my ink's on that side. We have a teeny tiny hole right in the middle, which I I think would be just fine, don't you? So let's see if we can get it to close. One, two, three, four. Tuck that little guy in. Oh yeah, no big deal. It does have a little bit of a hole in it though when you do it that way. <laughs> I'm way too young for CRS. Oh, I don't know about that. So there, there you have it. There's one other way that you can make it if you don't want to have to go through and recut all the circles and stuff like that. Although I think this is one of the quickest um, craft ideas that you can do, right? Ta-da, D says. <laughs> Let me move this guy over. Alrighty. Do you guys have any other questions? I'm just going to give you a minute because of the lag to see if there's any um, last minute quick questions that you guys have and then we'll sign off. So I'll just move back into view all the ones that we did today or that I brought along. Little teeny, don't forget teeny tiny man. You guys can certainly show up with teeny tiny ones. I would love to see those as well. <laughs> Joy, it's a holy card. <laughs> Sherry, me too. Wait, what were we talking about? We have 49 people watching. That is amazing. If each and every one of you guys could just jump out really quick right now here at the end and click that like button, I would so, so appreciate it. I want to see if we can get, because I know that that 49 does not include um, everybody because typically when I turn off the camera, I have about a hundred or so um, views, which means there are other, like, I'm guessing, like, phone, mobiles, tablets that aren't getting in on that count. I'm not sure. But thumb, thumbs me up. That would be really, really fun. I would totally love it. Every Anytime that you come and see me, I'll try to remind you guys. Because that lets, um, it's not the only thing, obviously, but that lets um, YouTube know that you guys like this type of content. And so then I can possibly get bumped up in the rankings because of that. So that always helps out. The other way you can help out, um, help out the Quality Crafts community so that this can be an ongoing thing. Um, I don't ever want to have to stop doing this. Uh, you can go ahead and do pledging over at patreon.com. 
Um, I don't charge for my YouTube. Obviously, YouTube is all free, so it's going to be free forever and ever. And um, if you just want to be a part of that, you can be a part of our private group where we do um, some extra little things over there. And um, that would be awesome. I was, and I just want to let you guys know we also have a blog, which is jensqualitycrafts.blogspot.com. And that coincides with the new store called jensqualitycrafts.com. The original one is just plain qualitycrafts. Dot com without the gen. So if you're looking for the stamps we use today or an ATG refill or paint, um, sticky, sticky tape or embellishments, if you want stamps or dies, go ahead and check out the card or the two, the two shops. And if you're looking for things that aren't necessarily in either one of our shops, if you go to the original store, qualitycrafts.com, click on store in the upper right hand corner and give it a moment to populate, scroll to the bottom that's where you'll find all of the Amazon links of things that I recommend. And I also have a vanity link, which just basically means it's like my own private page of all kinds of stuff that I recommend from Amazon. And so you can go to that page as well. And I wanted to share a link, but I don't have one right here. Let me just double check. Usually um, that comes up from try to think what I'm talking about. Penny usually pops that one out for you guys. And I don't see it off offhand here. Oh wait, here it is. Let me see if it'll pop up for you guys. One moment. I gotta bring my keyboard back in because I always get rid of that. So it's out of the way. <laughs> Joy, where are you from? I detect an accident. Oh no. <laughs> I'm from Wisconsin. There's my little Amazon link. I hope that worked for you guys. Um, if you're looking for Amazon products that I recommend, you can check it out there. That way you don't have to scroll you don't have to scroll through um, the Facebook page or anything looking for things that I put up there. And if there's anything that you're looking for that's not up there, let me know. I'll get it in there for you. I'll link I'll send you a link anytime you can PM me. That is just fine. Hi, Teresa. I'm sorry you missed us. We're on our way out. And join me next week on Wednesday for 1 in 10, 1 in 10 by Jen. And then also again on Friday for Friday free play. Because I can't wait to see you guys next video.